Yes, sir. We absolutely. Good. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Good morning, Patricia. Patricia Frank, how you doing this morning? Angela Hudson, how you doing? Good morning, Sandra Ellis, how you doing? Good morning, how you doing? Good morning. Somebody say good morning, MJ. This, <laughs> this is not MJ. Good morning. And as some of you are coming in right now, some of you are coming in from some uh, other countries. Uh, we have other countries. CCM is international. Good morning, CCM. Good morning, UCI. Good morning to you all. I believe that the Lord definitely uh, has a great word this morning. Good morning to you that are coming in. Erica, how you doing? Keisha, how you doing? Capriel, how you doing? God bless you all. And there's some of you, some of our YouTube uh, you're gonna have to come over to Facebook this morning. We wanna we gonna bless the we gonna bless the um we gonna bless the Lord this morning. All right, they're gonna Delorean Michelle. Harriet Hunt, how you doing? Patricia. All right, so listen, as you all are coming in right now, there's a uh uh this week my wife will be in Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville, Florida this week. Uh, make sure she'll be at the hospital church. That is Friday. She'll be doing a conference there, a conference day there on Friday. So if you're anywhere near Jacksonville, Florida, we want you to come. She is not here today. And there's a reason that she is not here today. Uh, I have had an amazing weekend. I have had an amazing, not just weekend. It started last week. Uh, first, it was my wife's birthday. We celebrated my wife. Uh, and then my birthday came and we celebrated my birthday and and we had all of our family We had family from up north. We had family from down south And so it's this being and she just has she has been serving uh, My wife just has been serving tremendously and blessing everybody I have like I said I had an extraordinary it was just awesome it was just my birthday my 50th birthday was completely awesome and I want to thank my wife publicly for that and then she not only blessed you know not only me but blessed all the relatives coming down and guess what happening right now she is resting y'all she is resting and she is resting because she is absolutely tired, Shell. <laughs> Good morning, Tara. How you doing? Nikisha, how you doing? And so, uh, um, I wanted to I wanted to come to you this morning and I wanted to make sure, one, that she gets rest. Two, we want to make sure that we serve the word. We want to make sure that we serve you with the word of the Lord and what he's saying and speaking to us in this moment. And and I'm gonna tell you, it it was I, I don't know. One thing, I, one thing about the prophetic is you don't know every person, but you do know when the Lord is speaking. You may not know every person, but you do know. You do know. So I want you to click. I want you to tag. I want you to share. Let somebody know uh, that Apostle Gooden is on this morning. I am on CCM this morning again. Good morning to CCM. Good morning to UCI. Uh, my baby is resting. She will be back with you on fire. Like always, tomorrow. And so I want to read the scripture this morning. And the scripture reading comes from Matthew 20 to 25th verse. Matthew, the 25th verse, the first verse through the 10th verse. And it says, And then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. Here we go, y'all. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took the oil in their vessels and with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there 
was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all ten of the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us your oil. For our lamps are gone out. Give us your oil. For our lamps are gone out. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> Here we go. Give us your oil. Because our lamps is gone out. But the wise answered and saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And so, for a brief moment, I want to speak to you from the subject title. I'm sorry. You can't use me. I'm sorry. You can't use me. And so when you're in a critical time, and I'm going to use for a sub, a sub thought, ready for whatever. I'm sorry you can't use me with a sub thought of, I'm ready for whatever. And so you ain't got no time to waste. And the whole subject matter about the five and the five foolish and the five wise, it, 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 it is built on the mentality of people. It's built on the mentality of the people that are around us. Sometimes family, sometimes friends, sometimes people in relationships, but it is built on the people that are around us. And some of us right now are bogged down, beaten down, broken down, not because we're not working and not because that we're not giving out, but because we're giving out to all the wrong things and all the wrong people. And so right now, when you need to be ready for yourself and what you need to do, you're not, you're tired, you're angry, you're frustrated. And even when this could be a time of building for yourself in your life because of everybody that is around you that is sucking from you and pulling from you, you can't have and you can't walk in what you need to walk in. Lord have mercy. This is what, watch, the, watch this. Right now, you need to be ready for whatever opportunity. You got to be ready for whatever opportunity comes your way. And you cannot be ready for every opportunity that comes your way when you're trying to serve folk that ain't going nowhere and ain't trying to do nothing. And sometimes, even if it is our family, we have to come to a conscious decision that I cannot push a wall. You have to come to a conscious decision. I can't push, I can't push my daughter. I can't push my son. I can't push my uncle. I can't push my brother. And a lot of us being matriarchs of the family and patriarchs of the family, you understand me, being the ones that everybody goes to, sometimes we allow folk to use us up. And so now, when I should be ready for an opportunity, I'm not ready for an opportunity. You got to get in your spirit why I am beginning this. I'm sorry. You can't use me. I'm sorry. And you know why that's hard for a lot of people? It's hard for a lot of people because you'll think, you'll think that I'm not being loving. You'll think that I'm not being kind. You'll think that I'm not being giving. I'm not, I'm not sharing. But what you gotta come to, and this is even in this is even in the marital relationships. Please hear me this morning. 
Because one thing about a marriage is there is a give and there is a, there is a take. There is a building up of each other. And sometimes you're giving so much and the other person isn't giving nothing. This is not our segment of the message. Me and my wife's segment because we practice, we practice giving and taking, but you need to hear the Holy Spirit this morning because you are about to give out and you are about to break down and some of you are even crying right now because you woke up worn out. You woke up, you woke up, you woke up feeling like you were broken. You woke up feeling like nobody was there and you woke up feeling like where is the opportunity for me? And truth be told, even if the opportunity came right now, baby, you wouldn't be ready. If the opportunity came right now, your heart wouldn't be ready. Your mind wouldn't be ready because you have spent so much time on everybody else. You have given to everybody else. Some of you are crying right now. Uh, but listen, I need you to cry with faith. And when my wife says and we say cry with faith, we mean that after you cry and after your tears go out, baby, put some action behind it and change your situation. Cry with faith. There was somebody and there was some of you that woke up this morning and you feel wore out and you're at your job right now or you're in your vehicle right now and you have no idea what to do you're at work but you're worn out you go home and you're worn out you're with the family and you're worn out and you can't even get a moment of peace because people keep seeking you out to even get your peace i noticed something I noticed something. And one thing I noticed is cycles. And one thing that I'm out to do, if nothing else, is to protect my wife from people that will use her up. Now we're not talking about monetarily. We're talking about people that take up the space of your mind and the space of your peace. Because you can't take nothing. We don't give you no way. You got to realize now, because I noticed something. I noticed that me and my wife, we would, we, 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 we take pictures and we would put up a photo and then there would be somebody that calls with, 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 with heartbreaking stuff. And it will always happen after, after they see us together happy on the photo. I'm not telling you this for nothing. Some people, as soon as they see that you have a bit of happiness, soon as they see that you have a bit of peace, they call, they text, they send message. Glory to God. Why? Why? Because, because they notice that you have something that they don't. And my brother, my sisters, especially my sisters this morning, because the Holy Spirit got my sisters in mind this morning. You have to stop. You got to get it in your heart and in your mind. Lord, if I'm going to be ready for opportunity when it comes, I got to cut some stuff off. If I'm going to be ready for opportunity, then I got to stop. I got to stop. Uh, I got to stop giving out to my sister every time she come. If I'm going to be ready for opportunity, then I got to. I have to stop. I have to stop what I'm doing. I got to stop the way that I'm moving because I'm giving out so much. If the opportunity did come, watch this. Glory to God. Even if the opportunity comes for you to meet somebody that is significant in your life, they will not be able to build a life with you because you got so many people that's pulling on the tit right now. Yes, I did. I said the tit. You got so many pulling on the tit right now that you don't have room for somebody in your life right now. So if the opportunity did come as soon as they would get in your life and get close to your life, something would begin to happen. They would, you would see them, you would see them pull back or you would see them push back because you're not ready. When the opportunity comes, you got to ask yourself this morning, if the opportunity come, will I be ready? If the Lord allows the man to walk in your life today, will you be ready? Or will the man see you got so much going on that, that, that you don't have room for me?
because even right now you worn out. Something happens when you come into a relationship and from all, all out of the door, there's, there's just too much happening. Cheryl Walker put beyond the call of duty. And, 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 and that speaks volumes because some of you are going beyond. Beyond means that you have gone past the circumference of what you need to do. You have gone past. Listen, mother, mother, you done did more than what a mother should do. You done did what the father would do, uncles would do, grandmama. You done tried to be everything. But I'm telling you, in this season, you got to say to yourself, I'm sorry you can't use me. I'm sorry you can't, you can't use me. Not this season. Not this season. Not this time. This time, I, I'm, I'm, I'm choosing happiness. This time, I'm, I'm choosing myself. Some of you have to come to the point where you choose yourself. You have to come because you'll always be walking with people like the five foolish and the five wise. And I'm going to get in that text. You will always find people or walk with people will walk with you that don't think they need anything because they're with you. I felt the heaviness on that right there. There will always be people that will gather around you that think that they'll be all right because you are there. You have to take away the security blanket from everyone that have made you the mule in their life. Now, I said mule. And the reason why I didn't use donkey, I didn't use the word, I would use the word mule because people use a mule to carry weight. They stock stuff up on the mule. They pile stuff up on the mule and then they use the mule to carry their weight. And some of you have been the mule in somebody's life too long. And it's time for you to push off the weight. Set aside every weight. Not, I'm not dealing with the second part of that scripture because we're not talking about you sinning, but we are talking about you missing the mark because you carrying weight that you shouldn't be carrying. You're broken down. You're depressed. You're oppressed. And the Lord says, this is the season where I'm pulling you out. And you have to be ready for the opportunity. Some of you are going to get some opportunities to go to other places, to move to other states and to do other things. But you know why you're not, you know why you're considering not going? You're considering not going because of the people that are connected to you, not the people that are supposed to be going with you. Talk to me. Because this is the thing. This is your life now. You've served. You've given heart, mind, soul, body, and spirit. But what do you have left? You got to be ready for every opportunity. See, because there's going to be some things. One thing about one thing about God, he doesn't forget his people. I know it. Uh, one thing about him, he always redeems the time. He loves to redeem the time. So so he loves to come and he and he loves to make up for what was done to you. And some of you, your makeup season is coming. Listen to this. Some of you, he is getting ready to redeem the time. Your makeup season coming. He's getting ready to open up some opportunities that's going to put you in another bracket. Going to put you, some of you going to be put in another tax bracket. Some of you going to be put in another, in another level of life. I feel this in the Holy Spirit. Some of you, some of you are getting ready to move and some opportunities are going to be made for you. But if you continue to be the mule that is, that is carrying carrying everybody's stuff because you think you're supposed to do it you're going to miss a great opportunity and I am I know that I am speaking to somebody this morning that the spirit of the Lord has said to you 
personally, I'm getting ready to move you. You have heard prophet after prophet, word after word, speaking to you about your shift, about your move, but you got a problem. The problem that you have is not that the opportunity is not ready, but the people that are on your tit, the ones that, 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 that have been sucking everything out of you, you can't take them with you and you feel bad. Can I want to tell somebody this morning and I wish I was at the church to slap somebody high five myself and tell you to tell them you have to let them go so you can get where you got to go at. You got to let them go so you can get where you got to go at. Because if if the, the one thing I the one thing that we do know as long as you allow them to do it, they'll do it. And so you're giving of yourself. So when creative thought comes, when opportunity comes, when, when these things begin to happen, you, you're not ready. So watch this. When creative thought and idea, when the Lord gives you a creative thought and an idea, an opportunity to go after it. When the first thing you think about is another person, you might be the mule in the situation. When creative thought, an idea, an opportunity all meet, that's what you call an open door. When creative thought, an idea, an opportunity all meet, when that happens, that's what you call a door. But when you have to question the door, when you have to question the door because of who's connected to you, you might be the mule in the situation. Somebody might be using you. And sometimes, listen, and, and if you want them, if you want them to stop using you, First thing you got to do is you got to let your own self go. That's the hard part. Y'all can act like it's easy if you want to. Uh, uh, the hard part is you feel bad. The, the hard part is I'm not being nice. The, uh, the hard part is, is this isn't what a father's supposed to do. The, the hard part is this isn't what a mother's supposed to do. Well, let me ask you a question. The hard part is this is what a sister or a friend is supposed to do. When is it when is it time for you to live for you and do what you are supposed what God have called you to do or when is it time for you to live your life and be all right with living your life do you know that there are some people that will not live their life because they are so caught up with how other people are going to feel and react and treat them for being what other people may call selfish. And can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a therapy question this moment? This is just me and you in here. This is this is just me and you, my sister. This is just me and you this morning. My brother, just me and you. Why is it that you feel selfish when you're doing something for yourself? Why is it that when you go out, oh, Holy Spirit, why is it that when you go out to eat something, you got to make sure you put it up and make sure you throw everything out because you don't want anybody to know that you spent time for your spent, spent time by yourself and took time for yourself and had peace for yourself. Why is it that we have you? You feel like you got to hide that because, baby, you're the mule in the situation and you need to stop being the mule in the situation. Now it's time to choose you. Well, what if they don't love me anymore? Well, what if they give up on me? Well, what if they what if they act like I'm not their mother anymore? What if they act like I'm not their father anymore? What if they act like I'm not their brother or their sister or their uncle anymore? What if what if they what what if they don't want a relationship with me? Some chances have to be taken for your own peace. You better look at some of these comments that are coming up right 
right now. Sometimes you got to do what the Lord told Abraham to do. He told Abraham to get out of this country. He said, get from amongst your kindred to a place that I'm going to show you. Why did he have to do that? Because as long as Abraham stayed in that space, he was going to keep on serving his father, Terah. He was going to keep on serving his father's gods. He was going to keep on serving his father's people. He was going to still be bound to his daddy by relationship. But God had to tell him to get out of the country, away from your daddy, away from your people, because I can't even show you the opportunity until you get these folk off your tent. I can't show you the opportunity as long as you're carrying the weight of people that have nothing to do with where God is trying to take you, where life is trying to take you, where relationship is trying to take you. Because sometimes, watch this, and y'all church folk, now don't y'all stone me, but everything isn't about God. That was something I had to learn. One thing I had to learn is because I was I I, I got saved as a diehard Christian. I got saved. I was in the streets and I served the devil with everything in me. I mean, anything he told me to do, I was a fool about doing it. And I gave God my word. I said, Lord, when I go over, I say, when I get saved, I'm going to give you the same thing that I gave the devil. And I did, but I did it without wisdom. Here we go. And when you do something without wisdom, you do it without thought. And so I served God, but Fred wasn't in the equation. And so I served God with Fred not being in the equation. I'm going to say it again. I served God without Fred being in the equation. Some of you are serving God so much, but you are not in the equation. Yes, he told you to give your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, but he did not tell you to take you out of the equation. You should still be in, in the equation. If, if, watch this, if all the happiness, if everything is about God and nothing is about you, then one day you're going to leave here and you're going to be mad because you weren't in the equation. I had to almost die. God had, I had to almost die die. I had to almost be broken down to nothing because I had been the mule in the situation. I was a mule. I was a mule in a broken marriage. I was a mule for the people at the church. I was a mule for friends and family. And because I was the mule in the situation, I did not know how to put me in the equation. So I didn't have me. So if, as far as my own happiness and my own peace, the reason why some of you didn't went and investigated me, it's all right. But the reason why you can go back and you see a man that had all the weight and you see, you see, you see me, I was heavy and you go back and you see a man and you ain't see a smile like you see a smile now because somewhere along the line, I chose me. And when I chose me and got free, then God came and he put somebody else in my life that was able to help me to walk to my next place in him. But I had to be in the equation. What's your problem? You ain't in the equation. Your problem is, baby, you ain't got nothing to do with the situation. You ain't benefiting right now off of anything. You cooking, you cleaning, huh? You, you going to work. You making sure you taking money out your savings, money out your 401k. I know I'm talking to somebody this morning. You giving everything you got and you still the mule in the situation. And today, today you are given permission to cut the tie and live. Today, you're given permission. Yeah, that's why the world coming like that. Yeah, I'm sorry. You can't use me. You got some, can I get some gas money? No. What you mean, no? You don't understand these words? You don't understand what I'm saying? No. Well, you ain't got no money. I didn't say I ain't have no money. I said I'm not giving you no money. 
Well, sis, why you treating me like that? Listen, door closed, bank sealed up, car revoked. No. Because you can't, you can't even go and enjoy a nice movie. You can't go buy you a nice dress. No, not because you need the dress. Just because you want to go buy it. Not because you need the shoes, but just because you want to go buy it. And you are, you are giving yourself out. And sister, if you don't get a no in your spirit, If you don't get a no in your spirit, you're going to spend all you got and you ain't going to have nothing else for yourself. And you ought to get something in you that says to you, you got to get that thing deep down in your heart. I'm sorry. You can't use me. The phone call rang. And, 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 and your partner began to talk with that woe is me and how she feels so bad. And all of this. And listen, both of y'all in the same situation, but your mindset different. You you handling some of the same things she handling, but she depressed about it. And you feeling good right now. You just done had you you just done sat down. You you got your good program on. You're getting ready to enjoy yourself and you get this phone call. And then as soon as you fit on the phone call, you you got you you got to do sometimes, my wife said it last week, sometimes you got to hang the phone up. How you doing? Oh girl, such and such. Listen, listen. I I, I can't talk right now. I get back with you. Bam. I'm sorry, you can't use me. No, you can't use my money. No, you can't use my, no, you can't dump your feelings on me. No, you can't dump your problems on me. No, I wasn't there. I don't know why you showed out and did what you did. I don't know why you, I don't know what, I don't know. No, no girl. No, no, no. I don't know what made you show out like that, but, but I, I don't have time right now. Because I'm choosing me. There was something about the five wise and the five foolish. Because the Bible now says, it says that all five of them were going in the same direction. Please hear this this morning. Because there are a lot of you going in the same direction. But you so, you so worried about folk. You so worried about people. And you being real loving. And ain't no, and listen, ain't no oil in your lap. See, the one thing about them five wives and the five foolish and the opportunity that's what's, what's in that text that it don't speak about. It doesn't speak about it. It doesn't speak about one of the wives that became fools. See, because now if we be honest, you see, and I can be honest and I can talk about me. I was at one point in my life, the wise that became a fool. See, it's all right for a fool to become wise. It's a whole other thing for a wise to become a fool. What you talking about, Apostle? I mean, when the, I mean that some some of you have been the wise that became a fool. What you talking about? I mean that you have you keep giving out your oil and you ain't ready for nothing that's coming your way because you keep giving out your oil. Yeah, you ain't ready because you keep giving out your oil. And sometimes you got to choose you. So what? So what? You want to go do something for yourself. When creative thought and idea comes, you need to be ready for the opportunity. That means that, that means that, no, I ain't going to be your mule. No, I got something to do. No, yes, I'm getting ready to go take this opportunity. I'm getting ready to take this money that I have built up and I'm going to start my business. Hold up, hold up. Y'all ain't even married yet. Why in the world you finna get this man? Why why in the world is you finna give him your money? Y'all ain't even married yet. See, one thing about it is, don't let, don't let, and, and I say this as a spiritual father, if you can receive it. If it ain't no rain on it, you shouldn't be giving no 401k benefit to it. I know where I'm at right now. I know that's the Holy Spirit. If it ain't no ring on it, 
you shouldn't be giving no 401 uh, uh, a 401k opportunity to it. Why would you go in and you and you take your security and you give it to something that's unsecure? Why would you go into your own security and give it to something that's secure? There's too many, too many movies. Tyler Perry made a lot of them, but there's some of them are true, even though they get on my nerve because I am a man that have been a man that have always tried to do the right thing as a man. And sometimes that junk get on my nerve, but it's true. There's too many women that have taken life savings, good God Almighty, and time and given it to men. And once they were on their feet, it was sayonara, see you later. I need you to choose you. I need you to choose you. That means that right now, my sister, don't go take what you have secure and put into something that's unsecure. Don't go take your security. Don't be a foolish, don't be foolish. Don't become the, don't be the wise that becomes foolish. Don't go and secure, don't go take what you have. No, you have to come to the point that right now, even in this relationship and in this time and in this season, because that man that told you he gonna marry you for the last five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, ten years. Can I tell y'all something about a man, ladies? Y'all wanna hear this this morning? <sighs> when a man wanna marry a woman, he know it. He don't just know it. He don't just know it a year later. He don't know it nine months later. He don't know it six months later. He know it. I need you to choose you this morning. You ain't gonna like this. But you don't need nobody to marry you because they feel sorry for you because you're going to end up in something tormented. Because they ain't going to want to be in it and they're not going to be there fully. And because they're not going to be there fully, because you just said, if you, don't, if you don't marry me, if you don't marry me, you know I ain't finna roll my head like no lady. Y'all can hang that up. If you don't marry me, no. A man knows so don't go, don't go give no more time because you've seen it too much where time is given, foolish version, where time is given, where life is given to, 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 to build up something for somebody else. And then when the time is given and the money is given, but that, but then they come into who they are and they come into where they are, not, not something wrong with y'all. Not, not a love ain't the same. Who the foolish one in this? See, I could, I could talk like this because I done been there. Huh? Who the fool in this? That's why you have to make sure that you choose you. You got to say to yourself, I'm sorry. You can't use me. Son, daughter, uncle, niece, whoever. Because what you're seeing with this person, that friend, what you're seeing with that cousin, if you, you have become the practice, I can get $10. They done $10 you every other day. I'm almost finished. If you allow people to keep draining you, what you going to have left? Because, see, that's the thing. That's what we're talking about today. Baby, you ain't got nothing left. And, see, I'm seeing some laughing emojis going up, but at the same time, there's some people that can't say nothing right now. If you have been, now, you may not be in this place, but we need a witness because we want people, listen, I want some folk to be free. I want somebody to get free. 
I want somebody to get to get a Hades no in their spirit. That's the way I got to say that right now. I want somebody to get a Hades no. Y'all can put it in the caption. If you have been one of the people that have been used, and then after they used you up, they was gone. I need tear emojis right here. If I could, I would hit the tear emoji myself. They, 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 I, look, look right there. Let me see the tear, the tear mode. They, they, they got what they wanted out of it, and then they were gone. Children, even yeah, put them. Yeah, let me see them tear emojis. Family. Then they were gone, and then in and and then look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at all these people. See the one thing. The one thing is it that that abuse is common. People love to take. People love to make people carry weights. People love to continue. And they'll use you up as long as you let them. And I want to say to some, I want to say to some mother, sister, or whatever the capacity or relationship you may be, but you're the secure one. I want to tell you that it is all right to say no. I want to tell you that it is all right that, and listen, don't just say no, make it clear. I'm sorry you can't use me. I'm sorry you can't use me. Wouldn't that sound hard? The reason why I tell you to say I'm sorry you can't use me is because it calls for explanation. Because some, Then somebody is going to say, well, why you say that? And that's when you say, I'm glad you asked. Because I have been doing this, and 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 I have been doing this. And guess what has not happened? Nothing. Nothing changed in the situation. The only, change in this, the only thing that changed in this situation is I grew older. I grew weaker. More was taken out of me. I was drained. I lost my peace. I lost my, I lost relationships. I like what Harriet Hunt says. She says, I'm about to be a hater. I love that Harriet. You know what she's saying? They may say you being a hater. But you got to be all right with that. I say it like this. You ain't love me anyway. If, 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 if a relationship is only a relationship that gives out, then it's not a relationship. Because a relationship is an actual boat of texts where people, where two people come together and sit in. When you're the only one that is giving out, then there is nothing in the boat. And you do not have a relationship, baby. And I know that this may be hurting to somebody, but you don't have a relationship because there's no reciprocation. In a relationship, there's a reciprocation. My wife asks me all the time in the most playful manner, you love me? I say, yes, baby. 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 As playful as that is, we're reciprocating emotion. We're reciprocating and building one another. We're reciprocating. And some of you are in some things and you're calling it relationship and it is not reciprocation. I need you to cancel that check. I need you to take that money that you were getting ready to give them 
and I need you to deposit that back in your bank. See, this morning, the seed is a simple seed of 17. It's a simple seed of 17 that speaks to me and gives me the courage to say, I'm sorry, you can't use me. The simple seed of 17 is one, uno, meaning one, you're going to choose you today. Yeah, you're going to say no today. And so if you want to, whatever you want to go buy yourself, I want to speak to you, go and buy it for yourself. I'm getting ready to go, but I want to say this one thing. Before, I want this one thing. When you tell them, I'm sorry, you can't use me. Then move from, move with purpose from there. See, from that point right there, you everything you do is going to be strategic. Even the seed that you putting in the ground, you putting that 17 in the ground, but you're going to work your field. So I'm going to plant my $17 seed, but I'm going to work my field. What do you mean, apostle? I mean, I'm going to plant my, I'm going to, I'm going to plant this seed. I'm going to watch it grow, but I'm going to water it by doing what was instructed. I'm sorry. You can't use me. I need to be ready for whatever. And I can't be ready for whatever if I keep giving it to you. And you got to be ready now for people to be angry with you. And this is this is the thing I'm, I'm trying to get out of here. But the Holy Spirit is giving me in this moment. This is the thing. Some of y'all cannot. Why is it? That you can't stand for somebody to be angry with you. What is it? That you can't stand for nobody to be angry with you. You better get a hate and no in your spirit. You better get a stand tall in your spirit. Because, baby, you done been used up. You done gave. Listen, there are some of you out here right now that are giving away thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And you done gave this away. And, and you've been giving of yourself. And you're about drain. And listen, you don't even understand that the depression that you're feeling ain't yours. It's your friend's own. It ain't even have nothing to do with you. You just didn't talk to this knuckleheaded woman so long and you didn't let this woman speak in your spirit so long that it became dark at your own house. And you saying, well, I, don't, I don't know what's going on. And you praying and you praying and, and you fasting and, and, and you wondering and, and, and you feeling you feel something over you ain't got nothing to do with you. You've been allowing people you've been you've been giving yourself to people. And they've drained you. They've drained you. What is it about you that you don't want nobody to be mad with you? I'm going to say it like this. You can go and get mad with me. See, one thing about it, anger is an emotion that some people do stupid stuff off of and then some people awaken off of. Sometimes, Anger helps somebody to wake up so they can do what they got to do. And at some point when they come down off of all their anger, they'll come back and say, you know what? I apologize. Because I really shouldn't have took it that far. I shouldn't have did you like I did you. But I need, I need, I need you this morning. I need you this morning to come to a place and a position. And I need you to get to that position and say to yourself, I'm sorry you can't use me. And you got to say inwardly, even if y'all get, even if you get mad, you just got to be mad. You can get mad. And then for some of you business owners, because you're out there, you getting ready to make a decision predicated upon relationship. The, 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 for you, that's C37 business owner because watch this 
you need the courage to tell the tell the people that you done and listen you done told and, and i know this gonna hurt but you told them yes because they were family you told them yes because they were friends and you have made a mistake you are like a wise virgin that has wise virgin that has oil that's getting ready to give your oil to somebody and they should have been doing they should have when they got the oil itself in the text it says that the five wise it says that the midnight cry i want somebody to know that today is your midnight cry you know why i say the midnight cry because it's the it's it's the time before the breaking it's the five hours. Five is the number of grace. It's the five hours before the break of dawn. And for some of you, it's a midnight cry. And they heard the midnight cry and the five got up. The five wise got up and the five foolish got up and the five foolish and both of them began to trim their lamp. Notice that everybody slept in peace. But some people are sleeping and they ain't got what they need. <laughs> It said that all five were sleeping. Listen to this. All five of them slept and slumbered. That's what the Bible said. And that they were at peace. Don't you know that there are, pe there are people that are around you and they sleep in peace because they know when they wake up, you're going to give them what they need. You probably don't like the way that sounds. But that's some truth for you. They sleep comfortably. But see in the text, the five awoke to the right, the five wise and the five foolish were awakened to a midnight cry because the bridegroom was on the way and all 10 of them begin to trim their lamps or prepare so they can light the fire. But then... Five of them did not have oil. And the five that didn't have the oil began to say to the five that got the oil, give us your oil. And how many of y'all keep giving out all your oil and you ain't got nothing to burn with? Today is the midnight cry. Today you got to decide whether you going to give your oil out. You've been trimming your lamp. But are you going to give out your oil? What you going to do? Because you got to do something. Yes, you do. If you don't do anything different. And yeah. That means that man that's in your house. That you ain't got his last name. And you've been giving out all your oil. Baby, you got to make a decision. Well, I don't want to be alone. What do you want? You, what, you, you don't want to be alone? You want to keep being a mule? You got to make a decision today. You business owners, and I know, listen, it's a few of you right now. It's specific. You specifically, you getting ready to let a, a relative in your business. You getting ready to let friends in your business. And the seed for you is 37 today. Because watch this. You planting something. So that God will give you the wisdom to be able to make the right decisions in your business so that you don't bring anybody in there because everybody may have, they may have it. And I, and I hear this, they may have the experience, but they ain't got the right heart to be there. They may have the experience, but they don't have the right heart to be there as a teacher, as a pastor. I would rather somebody that don't have experience and had a right heart. I can teach them the experience. I can teach them what they need to know. But when they ain't got the right heart, they come in with experience and they cause chaos and they cause hell. And, 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 because, and because you done got tripped up and you done got so overthrown by their gift, and by the experience, you let them in, and the next thing you know, your stuff tore up. Today is the midnight cry.
You need to trim your lamp. You need to keep your oil. And when that phone call come today, you need to have it in your spirit. I'm sorry. You can't use me today. As a matter of fact, not today, today. T-E-R-D-A-Y, today. You need to get, I'm sorry, you can't use me. No, I ain't got it. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, I, you got to find out what you're going to do. Because what's not going to happen is we're not taking this no further. This ain't going nowhere else. I got to go, y'all. Father, right now, I thank you for wisdom. I thank you for a wisdom that surpasses all understanding. Now, God, according to your word, you have defined wisdom as keen discernment. You have defined wisdom as craftiness and cunningness. I pray you would give your people keen discernment, craftiness, and cunningness to be able to maneuver through everything and everybody that has been using them as a mule in their life. Give them the heart to be able to cut ties from some people that they need to cut ties from. Give them the courage to be able to say no. No. Give them the courage to be able to look them eyeball to eyeball and say the book stops here. Give them the courage to deposit that check back in the bank. Father, for everything that you have done and you will do. I bless you, I thank you, and I glorify you. The seed today is 17. Business owners, 37. You're going to move in a different way because it's time for your life to change. Baby, they done used you enough.